How does a cyclocross bike do as a gravel bike? That's what I want to cover in this video and I'm going to be using my giant TCX and it's been about seven months since I sold my dedicated gravel bike which was a Niner RLT9 Steel. I really like that bike but I made the decision to go down to just one bike for both gravel road riding and cyclocross racing. Now this coming weekend is my first cyclocross race of the season and the only thing that I'm going to do on this bike to make it ready for cyclocross racing is change out the tires. And I'll show the bike up close. I'll show how I have it set up for riding gravel and how it does on longer gravel rides. Other than adding some accessories like a pump and a seat pouch, which I don't have on it right now, and of course a Garmin, the only change I've made really is the tires. So I have on the Maxxis Rambler 40C tires. And like I said in some of the other videos of this bike, the tire clearance is to me what makes this bike capable of riding gravel as well as cyclocross. Just absolutely tons of clearance. These are 40C tires and you can see there's still plenty of room left. So this is the only change that I've made to make it into a gravel bike. One of the main differences between a dedicated gravel bike and a cyclocross race bike is the bottom bracket height. So this bottom bracket is a little bit higher than a normal gravel bike and that makes the bike feel a tad top heavy. So with a lower bottom bracket as you would find on a gravel bike, you have a feeling of being inside the bike rather than being on top. That is not something that really bothers me. Uh, I actually prefer the higher bottom bracket because sometimes on my gravel road rides I will go on trails and I like being able to clear logs and other things that may be on the trail. Where the lower bottom bracket really comes into play on a gravel bike is when you're descending at higher speed. So the faster you go the more you want the bike to feel stable and that's where that lower bottom bracket comes into play. I don't really hit very f high speeds on gravel roads. I might hit 30 to 33 miles per hour. Since I live in a flatter terrain I'm not going to hit the really high speeds that I would hit if I were riding up in the mountains. Now, even in the mountains I think this bike would be okay. I've never felt that this bike is too twitchy. I've never felt on a gravel road uh, that I could feel like the front end just kind of wanders around too much. It feels very stable. This is a very comfortable bike. The fact that this bike is a carbon fiber frame and fork allows the bike to absorb chatter which makes it comfortable. It also has this giant defuse seat post and this seat post is carbon and it also flexes a little bit so there's a little bit of give so when you hit a harsh bump on a cyclocross course or a gravel road there's a little bit of give which makes the bike more comfortable. Other than the lower bottom bracket on a pure gravel bike the other thing that I found is the fact that pure dedicated gravel bikes have a wider gear range. So this is a single front chain ring and so it's a 40 tooth in the front and then it's got an 1136 in the back. To me, for the hills that I ride, that gearing is fine. I think it would even be an okay gearing up in the mountains if you weren't going up anything too steep. Uh, so for this bike, having a single front chain ring, it's fine as a gravel bike for me. In fact, I actually prefer it because it reduces the complexity of having a front derailleur. SRAM also makes a 1042 cassette which I think would really increase the gear range of this bike. So if I did get more into gravel riding in the mountains, uh, I could put on that wider cassette. Like I mentioned in some of my videos, usually when I head to the mountains, I want to mountain bike. So a lot of my gravel road riding is local. When I first got this bike, it came with a 140 rotor, both front and rear. What was interesting was Giant actually changed their specs and sent a 160 rotor to the bike shop. My bike shop contacted me, said they had to change it out. So we swapped it out for a 160 in the front. It still has a 140 in the rear. And I think that's a pretty good combination because you don't need quite the grip and bite and stopping power in the rear as you want in the front. About 70% of your braking power comes from the front brake. And so with having a 160 rotor, it makes it really good for gravel. Uh, you know, like, like I've said before in some of my other videos, the, the speeds that you hit on gravel roads are higher than what you would hit in a cyclocross race. So having that 160 rotor on the front of these bikes uh, really makes it good for gravel road riding and being able to slow your speed down when you need to. Cyclocross bikes today are becoming more versatile. And I talked about the geometry previously and a lot of cross bikes today are adopting that geometry 
of a little bit lower bottom bracket, maybe a, sl a slightly slacker head angle. But another thing that cross bikes today are, are coming with is two bottom or two water bottle cages. So you can fit two cages on this bike, which again, uh, increases the versatility and really makes these bikes nice for riding on gravel roads. I have this bike set up with a stages power meter, which I actually use more riding gravel than I would cyclocross racing. It's really not practical to monitor your power in the midst of a cyclocross race, so I really use this for training uh, when I'm on the gravel roads. Now I do have this bike set up as tubeless, and whether you're racing cyclocross or riding gravel roads, I would recommend going tubeless. It does lighten up the wheel set, so it decreases rotational weight. But more importantly for me is it reduces flats. I've put in about a thousand miles on this particular bike and have not had one flat. Um, and I attribute that partly to the fact that I'm running tubeless tires with sealant. So the sealant's able to plug up those little holes that may happen when you're riding gravel roads. One of the reasons that I'm able to have a cyclocross bike as a gravel bike is because of the type of gravel road riding that I do. I don't do mountainous gravel riding and a lot of my rides are between the 40 to 70 mile range. I don't do multi-day rides. I don't need racks and fenders and things like that. Uh, and I know, don't need a bike that's ultra comfortable. Some gravel bikes today are coming with suspension forks that have around 30 millimeters of travel. Um, I don't do 150, 200 mile, mile gravel rides. If I did, I may look at a gravel bike that's more comfortable, but I like this bike because it's fast, it's nimble, it's agile, without being too twitchy on the gravel roads. So to kind of recap, some of the things that you can do to a cyclocross bike to make it good for gravel road riding is to be able to put bigger tires on it. 40C I think is a really good gravel sized tire, so around the 38 to 40C tire range. So you want to look for a, a cyclocross bike that's able to fit tires that big. The other thing that you want to look for is a bike that can fit two water bottle cages. So that's going to wrap up this video of talking about how a cross bike does as a gravel bike. Like I said, I think you need to look at what type of riding you do most. If most of your focus is racing cyclocross and being as fast as you can, get a cyclocross bike and get one that can do gravel roads as well because if you're like me, you're only racing cross about four months out of the year, then you're using the bike for riding gravel roads the other eight months. Now, if your main focus is gravel, and especially if you want to carry racks and, and use fenders on your bike, and you're going to do a little bit of cyclocross racing, then yeah, get a gravel bike. It's going to do fine as a cyclocross race bike. So seven months after selling my gravel bike, do I regret it? Not at all. Uh, it had nothing to do with the brand. I like Niner. I like the RLT9 steel. Uh, Niner makes a great cyclocross race bike, the Niner BSB9 RDO. I've owned one. It's a fast bike, does great on gravel and cyclocross racing. It really came down to just wanting to have one bike to focus on and making it versatile to go on gravel roads and cyclocross racing. Any questions or comments that you have, leave them below. Thanks for watching.